Hello, TikTok. It's your favorite fat girl here. Fat girl freestyle. Giving you my contributions to the creepy story, scary story trend on TikTok. I wasn't going to tell this story. And only a few people know about this experience. But I decided TikTok would be a great place to share it. So I live in New Orleans, born and raised here. And as you all know, New Orleans is one of the most mystical cities in the country. There's a lot of stuff that takes place here. Some can be explained, some can't. But we peacefully coexist, for the most part, with our spirits. Everyone loves to have a good time in New Orleans. And whether you are on this side or the other, it's kind of hard to leave this place when you're having a good time. But I digress. So, a few years back, I drove a cab, and driving a cab, you encounter all types of people. Well, there was an older lady, I'm going to call her Miss Barbara. I picked Miss Barbara up one day, and Miss Barbara and I had a wonderful conversation on the ride home. And when I got to her house, Ms. Barbara told me that she was looking for a private driver to take her around to doctor's appointments, if she wanted to go to bingo, the grocery store, any social events that her friends had. She would be more than happy to have me paid, of course, as her driver. And I told her it would be my pleasure. So for about eight months, Ms. Barbara and I saw each other a couple of times a week. And I took her around. She shared stories of her life growing up in New York, why she moved to New Orleans, how much she loved New Orleans, um, told me about her husband who was deceased. She told me about her son as well. But for the most part, she was in New Orleans by herself and she lived in the Garden District in a big beautiful home on Britannia Street and if you know anything about the Garden District and what the homes look like they are some of the most beautiful places you'll ever want to see a lot of them are you know 100 plus years old and I believe Miss Barbara told me that her house was at the time, I think 125 years old. So you could imagine how beautiful it was. It had a big, beautiful porch, columns, whole nine yards. So it wasn't unusual for her to go a few days without contacting me. So this particular week I hadn't heard from her it was like by Wednesday or Thursday I was like oh I haven't heard from Miss Barbara she'll probably call me by Friday or Saturday because that was usually the norm I you know if I didn't hear from her during the weekday normally by the weekend she would call well it gets to Thursday and I get a phone call from her son It was a very brief conversation, and he just simply told me, I need you to go to the store for my mom. He says, I left a note, a grocery list, and money in the mailbox. I said, okay, no problem. I'll go and retrieve it, and I'll go to the store. 
still not thinking. I said, well, maybe she's under the weather or, you know, maybe he's in town visiting. I don't know. But I went to her house. And the first thing I noticed was a pile of newspapers on her porch. And this was a time when newspapers were still being delivered. And I knew that Ms. Barbara faithfully read her newspaper every morning along with her cup of coffee on her porch. So seeing the newspapers piled up, I knew something was off. So I got out of my car, walked up on the porch, and I looked through the windows. She has sheer curtains, so I looked through the windows and I could kind of see, but it, I didn't see anybody in the house. So I went to the door, rang the bell a couple of times, didn't get a response. So I started knocking. Keep in mind, it's a big, heavy door. So I'm knocking very, very hard. And I'm saying her name is Barbara, Miss Barbara. No response. And she didn't drive. So she didn't have a car. So it wasn't like there was a car sitting in the driveway or on the street or anything. So I said, well, something was nudging me nudging me nudging me nudging me like don't leave don't leave so I called the house a couple of times didn't get an answer so I said well I'm gonna call emergency services I said but let me try the knob see if it's you know open doors locked so I called 911 because I want them to come and do a wellness check. Well, I'm turned with my back to the front door on the phone with EMS, uh, emergency services, giving them the information, telling them I need them to do a wellness check, giving them the address. And I hear the door unlock and I hear the knob turn. Again, this is a big, old, heavy door. So there's no mistaking what the lock in the doorknob sound like when it's turning. And I told the, the dispatcher, I said, oh, she just came to the door. And I turned and nobody was there. But that door was open. So I pushed it open. And I start saying Miss Barbara's name. And to my left, I heard a moan it was very low but it was a moan so I walked in and just past the sitting area Miss Barbara was on the floor I tell the dispatcher I'm like oh my goodness she's in here she's on the floor something happened so I go to her I'm holding her hand emergency services arrive take her to the hospital thank God she's okay she'd had a fall bumped her head, knocked herself out, and she had been there actually a couple of days, going into the third day by the time I got there. So when she's recovering, she asked me, um, how did I, you know, come to just like show up at her house? I said, Ms. Barbara, your son called me and told me to come. He needed some groceries. He left a note and money in the mailbox. And she looked at me in disbelief and she goes, my son called you. I said, yeah, Miss Barbara, your son called me and told me, you know, there was a grocery list and money in the mailbox. And, you know, go and pick it up. And she's looking at me like, what? She's looking at me like I'm crazy and I feel a little weird because I'm like, your son called me, Miss Barbara. Hold on for part two.